All right, example eight says write a piecewise function d of t that describes the graph produced in example one. All right, so here's our graph. We had four different pieces, one, two, three, and four, that are describing our problem situation. So we need to write an equation or a function that describes each one of these four segments. These are all line segments in this case, so we're going to use the form y equals mx plus b to identify all these. And we're going to write them, remember, in our piecewise function form where we describe each function for each of the pieces and write the domain that describes uh, the domain that that part is good for. All right, So we need to do those things here. And remember, you can go back and watch the first video on piecewise functions to uh, get a better idea on how we're working with piecewise functions, the basics of that uh, in that previous video. Okay, so let's look at the first segment. Well, we've already determined from our earlier work, earlier examples here, that the slope of this part, this piece, was two-thirds, right? So this is just y equals two-thirds x. And then if you look, it's pretty easy here. Our y-intercept is zero. So this b is, we're, we're not going to write that there. We could write plus zero, but it, it, there's no sense in it. So this part is just two-thirds. And remember, I need to replace x with t because that's what I'm, I'm writing d of t here. So two-thirds t. And then I need to write my domain statement. So that is good. It, two-thirds t describes my piecewise function when t is less than or equal to 15, the rightmost point, and greater than or equal to 0, the leftmost point. The left point goes here, right point here. And I'm going to go ahead, even though we are changing at each one of these points, I'm going to use the less than or equal to and greater than or equal to each time for these uh, domain statements for this piecewise function, and I'm fine if my students do that. Okay, instead of just using less than and greater than. All right, so the second segment, if you recall from our work earlier, this one's pretty easy. The slope, this is a horizontal line segment, remember? So the slope is zero, so this term just falls off and we're only left with the y intercept. So it's just y equals, well, look, y is always equal to 10 on this line segment, no matter where you're at. Y is always 10, and a horizontal line is always y equals a number. And in this case, that y is 10, right? So it's just y equals 10. Pretty simple. So we can write the second part right here, y equals 10. And that is good for a domain where t is less than or equal to 45. That's the rightmost point here. And greater than or equal to the leftmost point, the, x, the t coordinate here is 15. So it's d of t equals 10 when t is less than or equal to 45 and greater than or equal to 15. All right, the third segment gets a little more difficult, and here we have y equals, and remember that our slope from our earlier work on this section was 0.9 or 9 tenths, right? So we're just going to go ahead and write that as 0.9x, and then we need our y-intercept. Well, our y-intercept is going to be, if we were to extend this line segment down, it's going to be way down here somewhere, a negative value, and we could find that algebraically simply by substituting in uh, either this point right here that we know or this point right here that we know into the y equals mx plus b. We already have m, so we could plug in, for example, 10 for y right here and 45 for x right here and solve for the b. But to make this faster and easier, let's just use our calculator in the stat edit function to do that. So we go to stat, we go to edit, we'll clear out whatever is in there, and we're going to enter these two points. So I'm going to put my x coordinates in list one. So I'm going to put 45 and 65 there. Those are the two points that I'm looking at. So 45 and 65. And now I put my corresponding y coordinates in. So 10 first and 28 second. Okay, so that gives me the point 45 comma 10 right here and the point 65 comma 28 right here. And then it's stat over to calc, option four, enter until we get down to calculate, enter one more time, and it gives me 0.9, which is the slope we already know, and then my y-intercept is minus 30.5. So I have a negative y-intercept, so that's minus 30.5 here, 
and that gives me everything I need for this third piece of my piecewise function. So it's y equals, or d of t in this case, equals 0.9t, we're using t in place of x, minus 30.5, and that is good for a domain where t is less than or equal to 65, my rightmost point, and greater than or equal to 45, my leftmost point. All right, so one more piece to go and we'll be done with this part. All right, so fourth segment, this segment right here. Now, remember before we found that this slope was 1 15th or 0 0.06 repeating, so we can go ahead and write that. We found that in, in uh, our earlier example there. So y equals 1 15th x, and then it's definitely going to have a positive y-intercept. So we could find that algebraically, or let's make this faster and just put it uh, in our calculator here. All right, so stat, edit, we'll clear these points out now. Okay, I'm going to put 65 as my first x-coordinate and 110 as my second x-coordinate. And I'm going to put 28 as my first y-coordinate and 31 as my second y-coordinate. So that gives me the point 65, 28, that's this point and 110, 31, that's this point. Let my calculator do the work. All right, so that's 0 0.06 repeating, and my y-intercept is 23.6 repeating here. So we could have found that, but that would have been, that would have taken longer to find it algebraically. So it's 23.6 repeating. So let's write this one. It would be, we need to put our x here and we'll use t here, so it would be 1 15th t plus 23.6 repeating, and that is good for a domain of t is less than or equal to 110, my rightmost point, greater than or equal to 65, my leftmost point. Okay, so that part is done. Let's move on to the last part of this um, Lesson, all right, these last four examples here just ask us basically for transformation. So it says write a transformation for D of T produced in example eight that describes each of the following situations. So we have our graph here. I think it's easier to think about the transformation in terms of the graph. So example nine says Bob overslept by 20 minutes but maintains the same schedule described in example one. So he overslept 20 minutes. That means everything is happening 20 minutes later. So we need to shift this piecewise function to the right to the right by 20 minutes. So the right to the right 20 minutes. So the way we do that, that's going to be d of t minus 20. Remember when we go in the x direction, in this case we're using t, we need to go opposite of the sign and it's inside with that x coordinate. So it would be t minus 20 in this case to shift to the right. Okay, the next one, example 10, Bob starts 20 minutes earlier but maintains the same schedule described in example 1. So we would have to take this full piecewise function and we're moving it to the left 20 minutes. So left 20 minutes. So to do that, it's right the opposite of what we just did. So it's d of t plus 20 would be that transformation. Okay, example 11, it's Bob's birthday and he doesn't care if he is late, so he allows himself three times as much time for each part of the journey. All right, so this one is going to be the most complicated. So his he is allowing three times as much time. So in other words, this first point, time, remember, is our x-axis. So instead of being at 1510 like we were, we're going to be at 4510. So it's going to take him 45 minutes. So we're going to be way out here. So it's going to flatten this graph out like this. So it's actually a horizontal stretch. We are grabbing all of our x-coordinates and we are stretching them to be three times what they were originally. So remember when we do a horizontal stretch, it's actually opposite of what you think. So it's going to be D of one third T. Okay, so this looks like you're divide, dividing all of your T's by three 
all of your t coordinates by 3 but you do the opposite so we actually multiply them all by 3 so remember when you're in with x it's the opposite of what it looks like so the minus 20 moved us right 20 the plus 20 moved us left 20 and now dividing multiplying by one third realizes the same thing as dividing by 3 but instead of dividing by 3 we're doing the opposite and we're multiplying by 3 so that is a horizontal stretch so this graph would be uh, stretched more like this it, it's going to actually look uh, more like that would be the first segment and then that would be the second and then that would be the third so it would be horizontally stretched like that okay all right so let's look at example 12 in a parallel universe another Bob lives in a situation in which all distances are twice as far for our Bob of example one so the distance is twice so the y coordinate is twice what they were before and when we work with y remember it's pretty simple it's exactly what you think so they're all twice what they were before so that would be two times d of t so that would be the transformation there all right that wraps up this video uh, on piecewise function word problems and applications with rate of change I will see you in the next video